Uh, the two types of inguinal hernias are the direct and indirect inguinal hernia. For the indirect inguinal hernia, it is occurring through the word inguinal ring. For the direct, it is just occurring through the abdominal wall right there. Okay, so we're actually looking at the surgical treatments like surgical approaches that might be nice for these two types of what inguinal hernia. So surgical treatment for direct and indirect inguinal hernia. So uh, for the direct inguinal hernia, that's the one that is occurring through the abdominal muscles. Okay, not directly into the inguinal canal. This one is through the abdominal muscles. Uh, mesh repair, you can place a mesh over the weakened area just to reinforce it. Okay, tissue repair. You repair the weakened area with sutures without mesh. That's another method, right? You can use the patient's own primary tissues just to repair. Then laparoscopic repair. This is a minimally invasive surgery, okay, using a laparoscope. Open repair. This is a traditional open surgery with a larger incision, right? Then for the indirect inguinal hernia, you could also use a mesh repair. You place a mesh uh, around the internal ring just to prevent further herniation. A high ligation that this one is tying up the hernia sac at its base just to prevent further herniation laparoscopic repair this one is minimally invasive surgery using a laparoscope then open repair this one is traditional open surgery with a larger incision all right then for the common surgical techniques you can use the Liechtenstein repair so it's tension free mesh repair they could use a shoulder repair this one is a tissue based repair technique without mesh they could use a total extra peritoneal repair. Um, uh, this one is a minimally invasive or laparoscopic technique. Right? They could use a transabdominal or preperitoneal repair. This one is a laparoscopic technique with mesh placement. Right? Then surgical con considerations now. Some things you want to consider before opting in for the surgery. You want to look at the hernia size and uh, complexity. They also want to look at the patient age and health status. Okay. Then you want to look at the previous surgical history of the patient. They also want to look at the surgeon expertise and preference. Okay. Then post operative care, you want to do pain management wound care wound care activity restrictions follow-up appointments and all that all right so uh for the surgical treatments you have to actually know what the choice of anesthesia to use okay then elective open repair uh, local is preferred then for the laparoscopic um you might want to do the laparoscopic surgery under what general anesthesia all right then for the direct sac is dissected away from the core that for the indirect now that's going through the inguinal canal okay so you know that the spermatic cord too is a content of the inguinal canal so it dissects it from the cord structures and the cremasteric fibers now sac should be open away from should be open away from the hyenatus content contents are then reduced and the sac is ligated deep to the inguinal ring with an absorbable suture all right then for the direct now, too broadly what based for ligation and should not be open. Uh, simply should be free from the transverse cellulose, what fibers and what inverted. So that's just like uh, instructions for the surgery. So these are basically the surgical what treatments that could be done for direct and indirect what inguinal hernia. All right.